Lesson 13 Heaven, Education, and Eternal Learning Sabbath Afternoon December 19 Long have we waited for our Savior's return, but nonetheless sure as the promise. Soon we shall be in our promised home. There, Jesus will lead us beside the living stream flowing from the throne of God and will explain to us the dark providences through which on this earth He brought us in order to perfect our characters. There we shall behold with undimmed vision the beauties of Eden restored. Casting at the feet of the Redeemer the crowns that He has placed on our heads and touching our golden harps, we shall fill all heaven with praise to Him that sitteth on the throne. Let all that is beautiful in our earthly home remind us of the crystal river and green fields, the waving trees and the living fountains, the shining city and the white-robed singers of our heavenly home, that world of beauty which no artist can picture nor mortal tongue describe. Eye hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. The Adventist Home, pages 544 and 545. The Apostle Paul was highly honored of God, being taken in holy vision to the third heaven, where he looked upon scenes whose glories might not be revealed to mortals. Mysteries which had been hidden for ages were revealed to him, and as much as he could bear of the workings of God and of his dealings with human minds was made known. Paul had a view of heaven, and in discoursing on the glories there, the very best thing he could do was not to try to describe them. He tells us that eye had not seen nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for those that love him. So you may put your imagination to the stretch, you may try to the very best of your abilities to take in and consider the eternal weight of glory, and yet your finite senses, faint and weary with the effort, cannot grasp it, for there is an infinity beyond. It takes all of eternity to unfold the glories and bring out the precious treasures of the Word of God. Ellen G. White comments in the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 6, page 1107. Do you think we shall not learn anything in the hereafter? We have not the slightest idea of what will then be opened before us. With Christ we shall walk beside the living waters. He will unfold to us the beauty and glory of nature. He will reveal what He is to us and what we are to Him. Truth we cannot know now because of finite limitations we shall know hereafter. Heaven is a school, its field of study, the universe, its teacher, the Infinite One. A branch of this school was established in Eden, and, the plan of redemption accomplished, education will again be taken up in the Eden School. The Adventist Home, page 547. Sunday, December 20, The Fate of the Dead None need lose eternal life. Everyone who chooses daily to learn of the heavenly teacher will make his calling and election sure. Let us humble our hearts before God and follow on to know him whom to know aright is life eternal. Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. Oh, what an assurance! What a hope! Let us ever reveal to the world that we are seeking for a better country, even a heavenly. Heaven has been made for us, and we want a part in it. We cannot afford to allow anything to separate us from God and heaven. In this life, we must be partakers of the divine nature. Brethren and sisters, you have only one life to live. Oh, let it be a life of virtue, a life hid with Christ in God. In Heavenly Places, page 29. If through faith man becomes one with Christ, he can win life everlasting. God loves those who are redeemed through Christ, even as he loves his Son. What a thought! Can God love the sinner as he loves his own Son? Yes, Christ has said it. 
and he means just what he says. He will honor all our drafts if we will grasp his promise by living faith and put our trust in him. Look to him and live. All who obey God are embraced in the prayer which Christ offered to his Father. I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. John chapter 17, verse 26. Wonderful truth, too difficult for humanity to comprehend. Christ declares, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. John chapter 6, verse 35. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. John chapter 6, verse 40. Selected Messages, Book 1, page 300. Jesus is soon coming, and our position should be that of waiting and watching for his appearing. We should not allow anything to come in between us and Jesus. We must learn here to sing the song of heaven so that when our warfare is over, we can join in the song of the heavenly angels in the city of God. What is that song? It is praise and honor and glory unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb for ever and ever. We shall meet opposition, we shall be hated of all men for Christ's sake, and by Satan, because he knows that there is with the followers of Christ a divine power which will undermine his influence. We cannot escape reproach. The Apostle Paul exhorts us, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Again he says, Now the just shall live by faith. Lift him up. Page 372 Monday, December 21 A New Existence In the earth made new, the redeemed will engage in the occupations and pleasures that brought happiness to Adam and Eve in the beginning. The Eden life will be lived, the life in the garden and field. They shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit, they shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. There every power will be developed, every capability increased. The grandest enterprises will be carried forward, the loftiest aspirations will be reached, the highest ambitions realized and still there will arise new heights to surmount, new wonders to admire, new truths to comprehend, fresh objects to call forth the powers of body and mind and soul. The Adventist Home, page 549. We may have a vision of the future, the blessedness of heaven. In the Bible are revealed visions of the future glory, scenes pictured by the hand of God, and these are dear to His Church. By faith we may stand on the threshold of the eternal city and hear the gracious welcome given to those who in this life cooperate with Christ, regarding it as an honor to suffer for his sake. As the words are spoken, Come, ye blessed of my Father, they cast their crowns at the feet of the Redeemer, exclaiming, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb for ever and ever. Matthew chapter 25 verse 34 and Revelation chapter 5 verses 12 and 13. There the redeemed greet those who led them to the Savior and all unite in praising him who died that human beings might have the life that measures with the life of God. The conflict is over. Tribulation and strife are at an end. Songs of victory fill all heaven as the ransomed ones take up the joyful strain. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain and lives again, a triumphant conqueror. The Acts of the Apostles, pages 601 and 602. We are homeward bound. He who loved us so much as to die for us hath builded for us a city. The new Jerusalem is our place of rest. There will be no sadness in the city of God. 
No wail of sorrow, no dirge of crushed hopes and buried affections will evermore be heard. Soon the garments of heaviness will be changed for the wedding garment. Soon we shall witness the coronation of our King. Those whose lives have been hidden with Christ, those who on this earth have fought the good fight of faith, will shine forth with the Redeemer's glory in the kingdom of God. Let this faith guide you along the narrow path that leads through the gates of the city of God into the great beyond, the wide, unbounded future of glory that is for the redeemed. Maranatha, page 352. Tuesday, December 22. Then shall we know. When the heart yields to the influence of the Spirit of God, the conscience will be quickened and the sinner will discern something of the depth and sacredness of God's holy law, the foundation of his government in heaven and on earth. The light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world illumines the secret chambers of the soul, and the hidden things of darkness are made manifest. John chapter 1 verse 9. Conviction takes hold upon the mind and heart. The sinner has a sense of the righteousness of Jehovah and feels the terror of appearing in his own guilt and uncleanness before the searcher of hearts. He sees the love of God, the beauty of holiness, the joy of purity. He longs to be cleansed and to be restored to communion with heaven. Steps to Christ, page 24. There may be some things here that we do not understand. Some things in the Bible may appear to us mysterious because they are beyond our finite comprehension. But as our Savior leads us by the living waters, He will make clear to our minds that which was not before clearly understood. As I think of the future glory of heaven, I feel an intense desire that every living soul may know about it. I long to hold Him up as the mighty healer. It means much to us whether we are in pursuit of the heavenly things or of the earthly. The earthly will soon pass away. In these days there is great destruction of earthly treasures. There are earthquakes in diverse places, and trouble and difficulties are seen on every hand. But it is our privilege to be preparing to become members of the heavenly family, children of the heavenly king. My Life Today, page 342. Between the school established in Eden at the beginning and the school of the hereafter, there lies the whole compass of this world's history, the history of human transgression and suffering, of divine sacrifice, and of victory over death and sin. Restored to his presence, man will again, as at the beginning, be taught of God. My people shall know my name. They shall know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. There, when the veil that darkens our vision shall be removed, and our eyes shall behold that world of beauty of which we now catch glimpses through the microscope, when we look on the glories of the heavens now scanned afar through the telescope, when the blight of sin removed, the whole earth shall appear in the beauty of the Lord our God. What a field will be open to our study. The Adventist Home, pages 547 and 548. Wednesday, December 23, The School and the Hereafter There immortal minds will study with never-failing delight the wonders of creative power, the mysteries of redeeming love. There is no cruel deceiving foe to tempt to forgetfulness of God. Every faculty will be developed, every capacity increased. The acquirement of knowledge will not weary the mind or exhaust the energies. There the grandest enterprises may be carried forward, the loftiest aspirations reached, the highest ambitions realized, and still there will arise new heights to surmount, new wonders to admire, new truths to comprehend, fresh objects to call forth the powers of mind and soul and body. And as the years of eternity roll, they will bring richer and more glorious revelations of God and of Christ. As knowledge is progressive, so will love, reverence and happiness increase. The more men learn of God, the greater will be their admiration of His character. 
as Jesus opens before them the riches of redemption and the amazing achievements and the great controversy with Satan, the hearts of the ransomed beat with a stronger devotion, and they sweep the harps of gold with a firmer hand, and ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands of voices unite to swell the mighty chorus of praise. The Story of Redemption, page 432. The day is coming when the battle will have been fought, the victory won. The will of God is to be done on earth as it is done in heaven. The nations of the saved will know no other law than the law of heaven. All will be a happy united family clothed with the garments of praise and thanksgiving, the robe of Christ's righteousness. All nature, in its surpassing loveliness, will offer to God a tribute of praise and adoration. The world will be bathed in the light of heaven. The light of the moon will be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun will be sevenfold greater than it is now. The years will move on in gladness. Over the scene the morning stars will sing together. The sons of God will shout for joy, while God and Christ will unite in proclaiming, There shall be no more sin, neither shall there be any more death. These visions of future glory Scenes pictured by the hand of God should be dear to His children. Stand on the threshold of eternity and hear the gracious welcome given to those who in this life have cooperated with Christ, regarding it as a privilege and an honor to suffer for His sake. With the angels, they cast their crowns at the feet of the Redeemer, exclaiming, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb for ever and ever. Revelation chapter 5, verses 12 and 13. The Ministry of Healing, page 506. Thursday, December 24. The Great Teacher. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Revelation chapter 21 verse 1. The fire that consumes the wicked purifies the earth. Every trace of the curse is swept away. One reminder alone remains. Our Redeemer will ever bear the marks of His crucifixion. Upon His wounded head, upon His side, His hands and feet are the only traces of the cruel work that sin has wrought. Says the prophet, beholding Christ in His glory. He had bright beams coming out of His side, and there was the hiding of His power. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 4 margin. That pierced side whence flowed the crimson stream that reconciled man to God, there is the Savior's glory, there the hiding of His power, and the tokens of His humiliation are His highest honor. Through the eternal ages, the wounds of Calvary will show forth His praise and declare His power. As the nations of the saved look upon their Redeemer and behold the eternal glory of the Father shining in His countenance, as they behold His throne, which is from everlasting to everlasting, and know that His kingdom is to have no end, they break forth in rapturous song. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain and hath redeemed us to God by His own most precious blood. Maranatha, page 362. All the treasures of the universe will be open to the study of God's redeemed. Unfettered by mortality, they wing their tireless flight to worlds afar, worlds that thrilled with sorrow at the spectacle of human woe and rang with songs of gladness at the tidings of a ransomed soul. With unutterable delight, the children of earth enter into the joy and the wisdom of unfallen beings. They share the treasures of knowledge and understanding gained through the ages upon ages in contemplation of God's handiwork. With undimmed vision, they gaze upon the glory of creation, suns and stars and systems, all in their appointed order, circling the throne of deity. Upon all things, from the least to the greatest, the Creator's name is written, and in all are the riches of His power displayed. The Adventist Home, page 548. 
The science of redemption is the science of all sciences, the science that is the study of the angels and of all the intelligences of the unfallen worlds, the science that engages the attention of our Lord and Savior, the science that enters into the purpose brooded in the mind of the infinite, kept in silence through times eternal, the science that will be the study of God's redeemed throughout the endless ages. This is the highest study in which it is possible for man to engage. As no other study can, it will quicken the mind and uplift the soul. The study of the incarnation of Christ, his atoning sacrifice and mediatorial work will employ the mind of the diligent student as long as time shall last. And looking to heaven with its unnumbered years, he will exclaim, Great is the mystery of godliness. Maranatha page 365. For further reading, Lift Him Up, The Teacher Sent by God, page 167, and Reflecting Christ, Jesus Showed Us How to Live, page 340.